feeds and speeds. I'm super excited for this video because Carl has this great process that really gives a formulaic approach and takes the guessing out of it. So a lot of times when you buy a new tool, you'll look at the tool manufacturer's website and they'll have a recommended surface feet per minute. Again, like we talked about, I don't really care about that. We've got to deal with the environment you have, the machine, its capabilities, its speeds, the fixturing, the setup, all that stuff. Do, however, check if they have a recommended chip load. Lakeshore Carbide does. They offer a range of chip load because, again, that's the number we care about. But what we're going to talk about in this video is the method called the zigzag, which is basically alternating between increases in RPMs and chip load per tooth, zigzagging back as you increase those two independently to get at a good cut. So let's walk through that. The first thing we want to do is we, you want to find a conservative starting point. And the more uncomfortable or insecure you are about either the machine or machining in general or this particular setup. Let's say you've got something that's really, you know, the fixturing just isn't going to get better than this and because of the nature of the part, so you've got to take it easy. That's okay. Start with where you think is conservative. If you don't know, if you're sitting here and looking at me and saying, John, I hate it when you tell me something I don't know what to do. On the Tormach, start at 2,000 RPMs and in something like half a thou to seven tenths of a thou per chip. You can see that right here in this Excel file. That gives you the RPMs, the IPMs, everything you need to know as a cons relatively conservative starting point. What you want to do is you want to take a quick pass and make sure you like it. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to, to decide, does this cut seem okay? Does the finish look good? Does it sound good? Are you, do you hear chatter? That's obviously bad. Can you see a real chip coming off? The only thing I can think of that would throw you off is if you happen to be taking way too small of a chip. So like we talked about, that would probably mean you're turning the spindle way too fast and not enough inch per tooth. It might sound good and it might look good, but you'll, you won't see a chip. It's almost like the chip is just evaporating because it's tiny. You want to see a real piece removed. So we're going to do two separate examples of zigzagging. We're going to do them in separate videos so that you can click through to link through. We'll start with a 30% width of cut scenario. This is the one I talked about in the surface feet per minute video where I like this, but ultimately we're going to run out of horsepower at the end because we only have 5,000 or so RPMs, and that's only going to get us to something like half of a horsepower, which is still like a third of what our Tormach alone can do. But that's okay. We're still going to have some fun trying this. And what we're going to do is, is start at 200 surface feet per minute, which happens to be about 3,000 RPMs for a quarter inch tool and three quarters of a thou or 0 0.00075 inch per tooth. That's going to give us a feed rate of about 9.2 inches a minute. We know the machine's not going to have any problem handling it, but let's see what the chip looks like. Then the reason we did this in Excel with the highlighted blue and yellow fields is you can see what's staying the same and what are we changing. So the first thing we're going to do, assuming that this cut is okay, is we're going to go ahead and increase the RPMs. And as a general rule, I would do about an increase of about 500 RPMs. Obviously, you want to start this below so that you've got some room to zigzag up before you hit your limits in RPM. So wouldn't do as much good to start this at 4,800 RPMs with a 5,100 RPM spindle. If we want to keep our chip load the same, then that means you've got to increase the inches per minute. So that's going to bump us up to about 10 and a half. Assuming that's good, then you want to keep the RPM the same, but you're going to increase the chip load per tooth up to a thou. Well, to increase the chip load per tooth to a thou and not change the RPM means, guess what? You've got to move faster. So again, increasing the inches per minute, this time up to 14 inches a minute. So you can see what we're doing really is, is simple. We're just increasing the RPM and inches per minute, but don't think in inches per minute, think in inch per tooth. Numbers here are all formulaic. I really please encourage you to play with this Excel file and take a look at it and use it as a tool and a resource. The only thing we grabbed here, um, not from this Excel file, are the horsepower and MRR or cubic inch per minute material removal rate. We grabbed that out of G Wizard just to sort of show you uh, our range of what we think we can do, particularly in the 80% example 
when we get to that last cut, that will be as much as we can do with our Tormach horsepower rating. And it might actually be a hair beyond it because of the torque curve. We'll see, we'll have to find out. And the last thing I wanna emphasize is this, this is not just, okay, now I know my feeds and speeds for this tool in every scenario. No, feeds and speeds will change. Seriously, folks, they change as a tool might wear out. They change on the condition of your machine. They change on whether it's clamped into a 10,000 pound gripping vise or a relatively precarious toe clamp. It changes based on the, the material, the shape, how you're removing it. So I'm not saying that you need to go through a full zigzag process every time you put a, put a part together or a you know, cam operation together. But the cool thing about this is you can give me any tool carbide, high-speed steel, I don't really care, number of flutes, don't really care, and any material, I don't even know what the material is, and using this process, you can find out the feeds and speeds that works. It is not some secret, it is not some hidden formula that you have to pay to uncover, it's, it's right there. And as long as you're methodical about how you step up, you're good to go. One last point that I'll also mention is there's also a three-way zigzag, what, what's the third of zen, I don't know, uh, where you can do what we said for zig and zag, which is increase the RPM, see if it's okay, then increase the chip load per tooth. Then if you want, you can also try increasing the width of cut. Again, this goes back to what we talked about in the surface feet per minute video of our machine runs out of RPM range before we've necessarily hit the max horsepower. So we want to increase that width of cut. We're just doing two examples today, a 30% width of cut and an 80%. But if you were trying to find some sort of a middle ground, you could do a three-way zigzag zen. Um, not really something I recommend an overkill, uh, but did just want to throw it out there. What I don't want you to do is do your zigzag, get down a recipe, and then start messing with your width of cut. No. Get your axial and your radial, that's your depth and your width of cut, to where you like them, then you zigzag, and then you lock down that recipe.